For this video, I'm going to go through a few long examples regarding Venn diagrams. Um, but I'm going to assume you've watched previous videos of, or you've read some of the slides or information regarding um, uh, calculating probabilities on these. So I'm going to go through two examples. And my main aim is to get you used to the notation and the theories behind um, calculating probabilities on Venn diagrams. So um, I have a rolling a fair dice, and the dice is obviously from 1 until 6, unless they tell you otherwise, but usually we just deal from 1 to 6. Now, um, you can solve this using just logic about like, oh, what's the probability of getting an odd number? Well, you have three odd numbers out of a total of six options, so that's 1 over 2. And I can continue with this throughout, but my goal today is to show you how to do it through a Venn diagram. So if I just create a quick Venn diagram here, and notice how all the options are like odd number, even number, prime number. So I'm going to split them into two um, sets. So I'm going to call my set A set B, and I'm going to let my set A be my even numbers, and B be the prime numbers. So everything not in A, so everything not in A will obviously be my odd numbers. And everything not in B will be my non-prime, or we call them composite. So um, listing out all my numbers, um, I have one is not a prime number, not a prime number, so be careful. And it's not an even number, so it just stands outside. 2 is the only even and prime number, so it will go inside because it's even and it's prime. Uh, 3 is an odd but not an even, sorry, it's a prime but not an even number. 4 is an even but not a prime number. 5 is a prime number but not an even number. And 6 is an even number but not a prime number. So that's my complete set. So if I want to solve part A, I'm going to get you used to the notation. So the rule is, if I want, this is the general rule for probability, if I want the probability of an event A, what I'm going to do is take the number of elements in the set A, so I'm talking about number of elements in set A, divided by how many elements I have in my universal set. So uh, the probability of rolling an odd number is not even, so basically a prime. And um, this is basically how many sets do I have outside of A divided by how many sets do I have in total. So in total we have six, but I want to know how many outside. And we can do this through shading, and there is a video on shading, so you can go through that if you're unsure about what I'm doing. So shading not A is basically shading everything outside and how many elements have I shaded in total? I have three elements in total. So hence, I can just write three in here and always simplify your probability. So I have one over two. Now, following the same logic for the other examples, I'm going to use the same notation. So for an even prime number. So I'm combining two conditions here, not just one condition. So I'm looking at an even. And it has to be a prime number. And the and notation is the intersection. And this will be the or notation, so the union. So and uh, prime number. So this will be the number of elements I have in the intersection divided by the total number, total number of six. How many elements do I have in the intersection? Just one. And don't write two, because two is the value you have in the intersection. The end notation means how many elements do you have inside of that. In this case, it's one. So this is the answer. Um, and if I go for um, rolling an odd prime number, so an odd number means not a, and a prime number, so it has to be and a prime number. So I'm looking and a prime number. So again, I'm looking at the number of elements in A, intersects B divided by N of U. This is 6. Well, let's look at this one. Um, again, from the video of um, 
Venn diagram shading, the intersection here defines where you've shaded twice. So let me shade once. Let me shade the A prime. A prime is basically this area. And then my B is this area. So where have I shaded twice? It's only these two numbers. So the answer here will be just the 3 and the 5, so it's only 2. Now we can think about it logically. How many odd prime numbers do you have? You only have two odd prime numbers. So this will simplify to a 1 over 3. And then for part D, which is where I'm going to explain an important concept, concept called combined probability, um, I have the probability of rolling a number that's either a prime or an even. So I'm looking at, I've erased it here, but I'm looking at the union. So the union gives you the or. So I'm looking that's either a prime or even. So even or prime. So this is the A union B divided by N union. Um, a union B, and this is a common area that we highlight. This is your A union B. And this is, how many elements do you have here? You have four, sorry, five. And this is divided by your total, which is six. So five over six. Um, another way to look at this is, um, so combined uh, probability or combined events is are the events that could have the two conditions at the same time. Now I've said either prime or even, but there are numbers that are prime and even. In this case it's two. Two is the only even and prime numbers. Um, but if I say something like, um, if I say, oh, it's either rains or it doesn't rain, you can't have both of them happening at the same time. So they are not combined events. Um, if I toss a coin, I either get a head or a tail. I can't get both at the same time. But things like dealing with numbers and number of facts and properties, they can have two properties at the same time. So we call these combined events. In combined events, if I ask you for an event A union B, so I, it's only for the union, to calculate it, I could take the probability of getting the first event plus the second event, but I have to subtract the intersection. Now, look at what happens here. The probability of getting an even number is 3. The probability of getting an, uh, an, a prime number is also 3. But notice how we've counted two twice, and this is where it's an issue for combined events because 2 belongs in here and it belongs in here, which means that when I did probability of A plus probability of B, I counted 2 twice, so it's double counting. So I did 4, 6, and 2, and then I did 3, 5, and 2. So to remove this double counting, we need to remove one um, the, the one time we counted 2 again. So um, I count how the probability of getting the intersection, which is 1 over 6, and this still gives you 5 over 6. So you can either solve combined events using a Venn diagram. So you can easily look at A union. You can easily look at A union B using the Venn diagram. So you can just highlight the area, or you can use this rule of combined events. Um, so either you memorize the rule or you understand how it works. So either probability of A plus probability of B, and then you're subtracting the intersection because you've counted it twice here. So you don't want to count twice. So this is the. Um, a fairly quick example. We're going to build up on this example um, here. So this is quite a long one, but I'm going to go really quickly on this so I can solve um, a couple of questions all together. So we have these numbers and um, a random experiment. We're picking a random number um, out of a bag and they're telling you that A is an event where A is a prime number and B is the event where it's an even number, so the opposite of what we just did. I would encourage you to pause and try and do the Venn diagram on your own. So 
So let this be A, B, and then we can plug in these numbers inside. Um, so remember this is, let me write it in, this is prime and this is even. So um, 3 is a prime number, 4 is an even number, um, 5 is a prime number, 6 is an even number, 7 is a prime number, 8 is even, 9 is not a prime number and it's not an even number so it goes outside and then 10 is an even number. So notice there's nothing in the intersection so it means that in this example I don't have something that could be a prime and an even number so I don't have combined events. So uh, we've already done A, the elements of A are 3, 5, and 7, elements of B are 8, 4, 6, and 10, and we've done all of these clearly. Uh, the probability of A, again, it's the number of elements in A, so we have 3 over how many elements do you have in total? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And the probability of B is 4 over 8, which simplifies to a half. Um, so find the probability that the number is composite, not a prime number. So we're looking at uh, what is not a prime number. So anything that's not in here, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have 5 out of 8 possibilities. So easy to see from the diagram. Uh, if I want to say the probability of number being rolled is odd, and then it means I need to look something outside the even. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, which simplifies to 1 over 2. Um, I need to find a, the probability of a number rolled as e is both even and prime. So let's try and use notation here. It's even and prime, so it's the and rule, so we're looking at the intersection. So we have nothing in the intersection, so it's 0 over 8. So actually just 0. And the probability that the number is either even or prime or both. So remember, the or means that you have a union. So even or prime or prime or even. So we can look at the highlighted area here. In this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 elements. Um, so 7 out of 8. Um, and I'm going to get back to this in a second. So, um, so these are just calculating the probabilities. For part J, they want you to verify this. Um, so verify questions are quite interesting. Um, so setting them up properly is quite important. So let's just do part J. Um, I have probability of not A happening. I need to verify that not A is the same as 1 minus PA. Um, not A means that we, we don't want a prime number. So not prime, so meaning it's composite. We already found the composite, which is 5 over 8. So find the probability the number is rolled as composite, so 5 over 8. We want to show that this P of A is the same as doing 1 minus P of A. Well, what is P of A? Um, P of A is 3 over 8. So you have 1 minus um, 3 over 8. And if you plug this in the calculator, you will get the same answer, which is 5 over 8. Now, I would encourage you to use the same um, process for P uh, B prime. B prime means that you want an odd number. So you have to do, you have to take our answer that we did above, and then you have to do one minus the answer and you should get the same answer. Uh, one minus the probability of getting an even and that should give you the probability of B prime. Um, for K, um, we got, we already found that P A union B is here, 7 over 8. So we have 7 over 8. And we want to confirm that this is true. And remember, this is the rule for combined events. And in this case, it's not actually a combined event, but the rule still works. Um, so let's test it out. Uh, P of A plus P of B 
minus p of a intersects b. And remember, by the time you get to this part, you've already found all the probabilities. The probability of a we found already as, um, as 3 over 8. And the probability of b is 4 over 8. And the probability of a intersects b we found as 0 over 8. Minus 0 over 8, which will give us 7 over 8. So the exact same answer. So this is how you verify. You use the answer you got, and then you use the rule to show that they are equal. Um, so the last three parts, we have um, find the probability that the number rolled is both odd and a composite. So odd would be um, not b, and composite uh Composite will be not A, and we need an AND, so an intersection. So again, I want to use the diagram and I want to use shading. So I have um, P of A prime intersects B prime. So I'm going to highlight my I'm going to highlight my A prime. A prime is everything outside of A. And then I'm going to highlight my B prime, everything outside of B. And where have I shaded twice? It's precisely only the 9, only the outside that I've shaded twice, because I'm looking at the intersection. So it means I only have one option here. Um, so. so the answer is just 1. So probability of A not B is A intersect not B. And you can think of it logically. Uh, you only have the, the only odd number that's not a prime is 9. And then for M, you have the probability that the number rolled is either odd or composite or both. So we have odd is B prime, composite is A prime, or because we're using the or statement, we are using the union. So again, let's use the highlighting above. We have a prime. So this is a prime. Okay, so this time we're looking at P a prime union B prime. Um, and I'm looking at B prime, which is this. So actually, I've highlighted everything because um, we're looking at union, and union is everything you've highlighted. So we are going to use that. So we've highlighted everything, which means all the numbers. So we have 8 over a total of 8, which is just 1. So using this last example, we're going to um, do the verification again. So we have that P A prime union B prime is 8 over 8, which is 1. But we want to show that it's also equal to this. So A prime, B prime minus P A prime intersect B prime. So and you've already found all of these. A prime is the probability that it's not a composite, which we've already found. Sorry, the probability that it's a composite, which we've already found is 5 over 8. And the probability that it's odd, we have found it as 4 over 8. And the intersection here um, is 1 over 8. So we've already found these numbers. This will be 9 over 8 minus 1 over 8, which is 8 over 8, which is 1. So we have verified. Now, it's quite rare that you'll get <clears throat> this sort of long question in your past papers, but the idea is that you're, you know how to separate um, probabilities, you know how to calculate all the different probabilities, so we've done all the possible probabilities that could come up, so only about three or three of them would show up, and maybe one verify question. So it's good to practice all of these different concepts. So hopefully it's clear how you use the concepts, how you use um, composite um, events, and so on.